kind of fun for me to be able to stick out really easily. Um, I'm going to be planning on doing, um, bringing other artists in uh, a few shows. Um, people that I've been doing lately, it's just not quite, and, you know, you, you want to bring something up to where uh, there's some kind of cohesion, where, you know, it's not necessarily the same level, but people trying to sell, you know what I mean, trying to make a business. Hello, I am Lisa Marie Benz, and this is another edition of Alive and Kicking on Location. Now the purpose of this show is to show you, everybody in the world on YouTube, all the local talent we have here in Florida, specifically Volusia County. And as you know, I feature a lot of uh, suntan kings, suntan oil kings, rock and rollers, but today I have a very special guest sitting right here. It's Tom, Thomas Dean Ashley, uh, originally of Highland Park, Illinois. So welcome to the show, Thomas. Thank you. How you doing? Doing well. Doing Great. Well. Um, and be sure to look at all of our shows at youtube.com forward slash Lisa Marilyn. Now let me introduce you properly. Tom Ackley has been a resident of Daytona Beach, Florida for over eight years. In that time, Tom has captured many of Central Florida's landmarks and wildlife, as you can see behind us. His contemporary style shows his close attention to detail with the surreal twist. From loose watercolors to tight and clean pastels. Tom explores many different mediums to bring his vision to light. So we're so happy to have you here in Daytona Beach. Thank you, dear. You certainly do liven it up wherever <laughs> I go, that's for sure. Nice. So um, how did you get started in art? Is this something from your childhood? Well, yes, a bit, but I never really put much emphasis into it. Uh, I could always draw. Um, uh, kind of out of high school, I got into political cartooning, and everything was more pen and ink, you know, not really doing much with color. Uh, became a musician for six years, traveled all over, and um, that really has kind of influenced what I do with art now. So um, became a painter, a uh, house painter, and started working for a company called Art House. And um, Donnie Wright, he uh, does all kinds of amazing things with paint, uh, making marble, you know, on staircases with paint, uh, faux wood doors, all kinds of stuff, stuff I never knew that you could do. Then I started, you know, kind of messing a little bit more with the art and then realized, well, I have this talent, haven't done much with it, never really thought you could make money with it, you know. It seems like trying to get into the MBA, you know, to really make it as an artist. But so really started focusing on it. And then uh, I met uh, Gregory Graham Grant, and uh, he uh, has an art school here, uh, art, art Quest School of um, uh, Design. And uh, I came to him and I said, you know, I've got this talent. I'm really trying to treat this like a business move but I need a crash course, like something serious. So he became a mentor, really, really took me under his wing, showed me all kinds of techniques, uh, really put in a lot of work. And um, so then kind of went out on my own and through the French market. Uh, it's a uh, local market that they do on Beach Street. And um, uh, my fiance, she had said, why don't you show some art there? And so I didn't really expect to sell anything. I thought it would be nice to be able to show. And sure enough, people started, you know, picking up some of these paintings. So then from hence on, it's been nonstop just knocking them out. So. Well, that's great. Okay, so how long does it take you to do, like, like this one here, this um, one of the, our pier? Well, yeah, you know, I, I treat it... big. <laughs> I treat it kind of like um, where you'd see Bob Ross on TV, right? He does a whole painting in a half an hour. If you take so long, if you have to keep coming back to it, you lose that original spark that you had. And sometimes I like to go really fast to let almost not natural accidents happen, but I, I just think it, 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 it captures what I'm trying to do. So I do it rather quickly. I typically don't uh, devote more than two hours to a painting. So uh, watercolors, they go very, very fast. Um, it's, I just think the more that you pick and pick and pick at something, the less natural the feel is, and you lost it, you know. So uh, I do them pretty quick. So you just kind of plant yourself down and yeah. mm -hmm. paintbrush and... Yeah, I treat it like um, we're a golfer. He's got to go to the driving range. He's got to right. do these things. He's got to golf at least once a week or he'll lose it. Mm -hmm. And so that's the way I am with painting. I have to do at least two paintings to keep it sharp and to keep it evolving. You know, um, Really trying to find what naturally is coming out of me from everyone else. There's so much art out there. You know, I do tropical art. There's many artists I have to be careful not to look like. I mean, there's all types of stuff, but through the work, 
um, a voice has been coming out. So it's very exciting. So who influences you? Um, like Andy Warhol or any of those? Well, you know, <laughs> what I do like is artists that take something that had one meaning and completely switch it around and give it another meaning. There was an artist called uh, uh, Marcel Duchamp, and he would take something as simple as uh, uh, a ball of yarn, two plates uh, of metal, and there was something inside of it. You were allowed to pick it up, shake it. It's called With Hidden Noise. It's sold huge for millions. And it, the whole point is you have no idea what's in this thing, and you're not going to destroy it to try and open it and find out. So I like artists that uh, not necessarily what you see is what you get. They take a natural thing and really kind of twist it. That's the whole surreal thing that I use. You know, I, uh, when I do portraits of people, perhaps I'll make their legs a little longer. You know, that's something that's more appealing to us than um, I try not to be too much of a photographic um, uh, artist. I spent a lot of time in doing that, but it felt more like I was doing a crossword puzzle than, you know, trying to do a work of art. So. And if you make people look thinner, too. All right, exactly. <laughs> and younger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so your work has an interesting style to each medium. Can mm -hmm. you explain your techniques? Uh, well, um, I work in three general mediums. I do acrylic painting, watercolor, pastel, and then charcoal, too. But uh, um, in my watercolors, uh, I have a technique where I actually blow the paint around on the page. And so I'll use a kind of a splotch of color and then control it with my breath. It gives this natural splatting that I could never draw in itself. Um, so that's a, a little something that's um, specific to my style. When I use acrylic paints, I like to, I like it to look really, really thick. You know that mm -hmm. shows value to me. You know, it's mm -hmm. uh, when I go to St. Augustine in some of these galleries and you see these paintings that the painting is uh, the paint is almost hanging off the canvas. Um, I just thought, God, that's amazing, and I felt it commanded the price that it did. You know, this is a $2,500 painting. So I talked with the gallery owner. I was like, how did this guy do this? What is, how did he get all that paint? He actually took the paint and put it inside of a pastry, uh, you know, that you'd use with cakes, and he'd use this to make these flowers. Huge amounts of paint that would hang off. I liked that idea, and I thought, well, what could I do? Well, through my, you know, house painting experience, I actually take house caulk. And I'll draw it out with the caulk that I want, knife it all out, let it dry, and then paint over that, which looks like thick, thick paint. And so that's another style that I kind of use. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. Wow. That's fun. And well, with the times being a little tougher now, mm -hmm. um, are you seeing it affect your sales? or? Well, it's, my main thing is I don't outprice myself. You know, locally here in Daytona Beach, we have all kinds of, uh, you know, tourist industry, the races, mm -hmm. the bikes, but that's what it is. We don't have the white collar work. We don't have a lot of art buying community, but there has been a lot of sales. And I've been really surprised, but I priced myself correctly. You know, if you're going to spend $1,000 on a painting, there better be something seriously special to you. And so a lot of my stuff ranges from smaller pieces, you know, for under $100 and then on up to 1500 But I try to make myself accessible to everyone. So they'll come into my gallery, they see the things that I can do, a lot of larger pieces, but they might leave with something smaller. So it pays the bills. But, um, you know, it's, uh, people are at the point where they don't just want to find something that's going to match the couch, you know, or the, the drapes in their house and go to home goods and maybe spend 150 bucks. They want something that has been actually done. I print just a few of my works. I like to keep it original, and it's the only time it will be done, and will never be done again. And so I feel that that holds a lot of, lot of value in it. So that's what's been making the sales. And if, if a customer wants to buy, let's say, a set, Mm -hmm. Like three or four or five, a whole mm -hmm. collection. Mm -hmm. You get a special of deal course, that way. Absolutely. Well, <laughs> you know, the great thing about art is it's my time and it's my talent. And it's mm -hmm. not much. It's not hurting me. It's not something I have to work really hard at. So I give a lot too, you know, um, to all kinds of people. Maybe someone not, might not even be able to afford something, but they just absolutely love it. Sometimes I'll give it because it goes so much further with their good graces, the things they say about me, the people they come to see. Uh, it goes so much farther than the X amount of dollars that it would have done. So, um, yeah, yeah. That's great. Now, I ha did notice by going to your website, once I mm -hmm. saw your signature, I've mm -hmm. seen it all over town. Mm -hmm. So you've got your pieces of work in restaurants mm -hmm. and all kinds of places. How did that come about? Um, I was uh, first told that uh, a gentleman, uh, Brad Dish, he owns the dish in um, uh, Ormond Beach, 
And uh, I had heard that they were featuring local artists. I've seen, you know, in other um, restaurants them showing art as well. But uh, I contacted him, saw what he thought about it, and he's so generous. They want nothing to be able to show this stuff. And he's given me a huge wall to put about eight different paintings up. Uh, I've got stuff up at the ocean deck. It's, um, people like to see that positive things are coming out of our community. You know, it's tough with us losing homes, real estate, businesses going out. But, you know, when people still find, you know, old structures that we like and do art with that, it's, it's, really, been, uh, it's really been paying off. So, yes, I've, I've um, received a lot of uh, positive things from uh, business owners wanting to show my stuff. And people okay. can buy them right there off the wall, right? Absolutely. Of okay. Mm -hmm. At the dish on Granada. At the dish. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I know that you are also doing um, some children art classes. I saw that in the paper. Mm -hmm. Can you mm -hmm. explain that? Yeah, just had a class this morning. Um, it's a month long class. I'm kind of sticking my foot into the water here and testing the waters with the kids. I don't have a huge facility for them, so it's uh, maxed out at four. And then it's. Uh, uh, four weeks, a uh, full month, and each week is a different medium. So they first learn charcoals, then pastels, then watercolor, then painting. Um, the whole cool thing with this class is it's not so structured to where they feel like they're going to, you know, a piano lesson where they have to sit and follow the rules and do all these things. I find what's really special inside that kid, a unique voice, and then teach them the tricks that it takes to be able to work with these mediums. Mm -hmm. Then they actually go home with completed works that their parents can frame and, you know, put in their house. And they have. They, they love it. It's, it's, it's really, really enriching. Plus, it's a good way to mentor these kids, you know. Right. You have them in this great situation. Times nowadays, uh, you know, it's been a lot of boys in my class, and all they do is play the video games constantly, you know. <laughs> to be able to get them to put that down and do something organically and look inside their own brain, you know, it's, it's been a lot of fun. Or constant texting or something. <laughs> all of this, you know, it's, they're just bombarded. So for them to be able to come to a place to quiet down, focus, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's fun. Now, will you be bringing any more artists into your gallery here? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um, it's uh, hoping to do some shows in September. I have two other rooms where I'll be renting out uh, two spaces. And then uh, typically on a Friday then, right after work, when people, you know, are kind of coming in, we'll have wine, cakes, cheeses, things like that. And, uh, yeah, I'm planning on doing a few of those uh, coming up in uh, September. And like a meet the artist. And that's the neat thing is people can actually come in here and meet you. Absolutely. Do they have to have an appointment or can they just stop in? Um, on the weekends they do. Um, I'm generally not here on the weekends, but during the week um, I'll be open from uh, Tuesday till Friday. Hours are 2 to 7. And uh, if I'm not here, my fiancé owns the uh, salon next door so they could always knock and be let in. So. Yep. Well, this would be a great place to have your wedding. Oh, my gosh. I know, right? We're trying to do the keys. 9, 10, 11. That's the date. You know? <laughs> People always have fun with the days. And that way you can always remember it. Exactly. See? That's why. So tell us what your future holds for you and your gallery here in South Daytona. Well, you know, um, first opening the gallery, it was kind of to put some good clout to my work somewhere for people to be able to come and see, but the location doesn't have a lot of walk-through traffic. So the next move is kind of St. Augustine is what I'm looking at. Um, been going there quite a bit, uh, doing a lot of researching, and um, it's amazing. It's, it's a destination place where people are going that they would possibly leave with some art. There's mm -hmm. so much history, so many things going on in there. So I'm going to be really kind of focusing on uh, walk-in traffic. There's not too many places in Daytona that are going to have that, so it looks like St. Augustine's um, kind of on, uh, on the horizon here, um, plus uh, doing a lot of traveling. I uh, want to go down to the Keys, some more West Coast stuff, do local things, and then through the Internet, you can make yourself as available as you want. So it's, uh, it's going to be a lot of legwork on the Internet. I'm hoping to be you know, making the trip to FedEx once a week. <laughs> so <laughs> right. we'll see. We'll and see. so now uh, people can find you on Facebook. Yes, right? absolutely, under okay. Artist Tom Ackley. And then also on my website, it's ackleyart.com. Uh, it's going to take a little revamping there, but my full portfolio is for view on Facebook. And then if you friend me, uh, you can see all the works that I put out and uh, all kind of uh, things like that. So, yeah, Facebook's been very good to me. Great. And your address here is 1635 South Ridgewood Avenue, mm -hmm. Suite 103, South Daytona, 32119, in case you want to use the GPS. And you can reach him at 386-295-3667. So, um, are you looking forward to any um, art shows coming up at all in the future? Yeah, there is going to be um, a, a 
performance at the uh, Peabody. It's um, Arts on Stage, it's going to be called. And, Great. Uh, yeah, I uh, plan to be showing in the Rose Room, and then um, they'll be uh, having other artists there. Uh, Perigo is a great artist in town. He's going to be doing some performance art there as well. So that's in September. I believe it's the 5th and 6th. It's uh, Friday and Saturday, but uh, going on Peabody's website is definitely available. Great. Well, thank you, Tom. Thank so you so much for beautifying so much. Daytona. Thanks. One uh, square mile at a time. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so once again, if you want to um, to add Tom to your friends on Facebook, you can find him at artist Tom Ackley on Facebook, and also you can give him a call at three eight six two nine five three six six seven. So thank you so much for watching another edition of Alive and Kicking on Location. Remember to follow your dreams and cheers to your life. Bye bye. Thanks, Tom. Thank you. <laughs>